Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky, and you're listening to Live Without Limits. Today's show is titled, How to Know When You Should Outsource Your Sales. Now, when you first start a business, especially online, and you really don't have a whole lot of money, it's easy to want to wear all the hats. But then what happens is you're playing into your strengths and you're playing into your weaknesses. And what happens that when you start doing the things that are in your weaknesses that you don't like to do, then it's no longer enjoyable. Therefore, it's important to know where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, and to know that when it comes to marketing or sales or closing sales, are you a good closer? And if not, then it's time to outsource. The world of business-to-business sales has changed. The strategies that used to work may no longer apply to the modern day customer. To penetrate the right market, business to business companies have to make sure they can keep up with the changes and adjust their sales strategies accordingly. What matters is to be able to reach the target market and turn them into buying clients. That is where sales outsourcing comes in. Here's the scenario. You have a website. You're selling products or info products. How are you going to generate traffic? Well, it's understanding their search engine optimization. You're creating blogs. You're you're basically creating and, and looking for organic traffic as opposed to pay per click to get people to your website. And then you've got to worry about how long they stay on a page and how long they're going to be there. And are they going to abandon something before they actually even purchase it? When to outsource your sales. Outsourcing business to business sales refers to hiring a third-party service provider or handle the company's sales strategy to maintain a sales team and implement the sales process. This team will operate as an extension of a business-to-business company. So if you're a small entrepreneurial startup, why not find someone else who is also a solopreneur, who you either barter off services if you have something that they need, or they, because they're a startup, they're willing to allow you to, to go at a lower pace with the idea as business picks up that you increase. So it's always good to be able to look for strategic alliances in areas where you're in need and that person is in need and how you can help each other. Outsourced sales, if done properly, can increase both top line and bottom line revenue. So when should a company outsource its sales? If you are unsure whether outsourcing is right for your company, then What you need to do is consider the situation and needs of your business. Here are some signs that tell you to consider outsourcing your lack of time to create your own in-house team. Or if you're a startup, a medium to large-sized company, then you can always hire someone as an independent contractor 
that works for you part-time as opposed to working for you full-time. If you work from home and they work from home, then it's a a win-win for both of you. And in certain circumstances today, and this is a trend that's been going on really since the beginning of the 21st century, that many companies, especially because of technology, all they had to do was supply the computer with the software on, get the employees trained, and have them log into the mainframe of the platform and then deal with the customers. In IT, you don't have to be in the same city as your employer. All you have to do is log into the platform because every corporate corporation today, every small mom and pop store has to have a website of some kind whether it's your way of marketing your products and doing drop shipping or doing white labeling or however you want to run your business in order to be successful. So what should a company outsource its sales? If you are unsure whether outsourcing is right for your company, consider the situation and needs of your business. Here are some signs that tell you how to consider outsourcing, the lack of time to create your in-house. Many companies think that having an in-house sales team is the best option, especially since it provides complete control over the sales process. You can decide who to hire and determine how the team will operate. But as exciting as it may seem, building an in-house sales team can be very challenging. You have to make sure that the members of the team are knowledgeable about sales. They need to be well-versed in handling various types of clients. This is it. You when you're in sales, you really have to be able to read people and understand what's their hot buttons, what's their cold buttons. Because if you touch on someone, if you, if you tell them what they hear, what, what they really want to know, then you can really trigger that buying sequence. So what I want to do here is, is talk a little bit about behavioral styles and I usually, because I'm familiar with and have used the DISC products, the D is the dominant personality type. And this is someone who feels like they can control their environment, they can, they can do and get away with whatever they want to because they think they're right and, and everyone else is wrong, or they feel like they own something, whether they truly own it or not. Then you have the I personality, which is the person who's very much has very good interpersonal skills and can talk to anyone. Now, whether or not they're good in sales becomes a very different story. Here's the thing is, when you're the salesman talking to you, you need to understand that whether they're a D and an I, they don't really care a lot about details. They just care about bottom line. But if you're dealing with someone who's the steadiness personality, they're the mediator, they're the person who will literally do things by the book just because the book says that this is the way it should be done. And then you've got the C personality, which is the conscientious personality. And this is a person who questions everything, every detail. They have to know, know every little minute things about something before they make a decision. Now, we have all of these different personality types within us, but some are stronger than others. And when you recognize that and you can adapt your conversation to those personalities, then that is what is going to help you to close more sales. That means that you need to set aside time to create the best team for your company.
the hiring process can be long. You need to attract the right applicants to go through interviews. Then you have to choose talented candidates. After that, you may need to train the sales team members to know how to properly handle clients depending on which stage of the sales process that you're in. You do not have an efficient in-house team. Another reason to outsource your business-to-business -business sales function is the lack of an efficient in-house team. If your sales department constantly fails to meet deadlines or is not producing positive results, it may be time to consider getting help from a professional outsourcing service provider. Working with dedicated team sales experts to, will increase the efficiency of your company. Outsourcing will help shorten the time it takes to generate results. This can, this thus, you can expect effective sales strategies that will help you grow your revenue. Additionally, you also get to focus more on other essential aspects of the business. You can spend more time in product development or innovation. Now, what have we really been talking about? Well, here's the thing. You need a sales team that knows your products in and out. Not only that, they know how to do incorporate all of digital marketing. Digital marketing is understanding what keywords to use in articles, where to post those articles, where do your customers actually hang out? Because if you know exactly where your customers hang out, then you can improve your sales because it's all about building relationships. And here's another thing that is important within that building, that online business and digital marketing is knowing how to use your email autoresponder to create emails that will help your customers. Because guess what? I bought a product from you today. I get it, but I may not know how to use it. Well, if you're putting articles online, or you're sending out an email, where you're giving them little tips and tricks on how to improve their lifestyle based on your product. And what happens is you that increases you the opportunity to get more open rates, to improve the, the ranking or the rating on your emails. Then it gets into the inbox more. And usually if you're going to be sending out emails for the sales or information on product sales or, or whatever type of sales that's going on within your company, what do you want to do? Well, you want them to know along the way why your product is really good, how to utilize it, how it can benefit them, and whatever else they need in order to become raving fans and loyal customers. You find your team overburdened. It's another reason. There are a lot of tasks involved in sales. Do you have enough personal personnel to handle each activity? Or do you have a small team that takes care of all the company's sales needs. It is best not to overburden an employee with multiple tasks. Not only does it prevent efficiency, but it may also cause burnout. See if your team is being overworked. If that is the case, consider outsourcing. You can offer out or either outsource the whole sales function, or get help 
with a particular task, such as finding leads, setting appointments, and booking meetings, or closing details. Now, here's the thing. On your website, you all you like on the platform that I use, there is a booking app. So I set it up for coaching services and for webinars. And here's what happens. When someone says they want to book an appointment, I give them that particular link so that they can book it. And then all I have to do is go and set up the meeting in Zoom. That way, it's all tied together and all working together. You want to say infrastructure and software costs. Maintaining an in-house sales team comes with expenses. You even have to spend money during the hiring process. Then you need to make sure that your employees have the proper skill set necessary for their jobs. That requires educating them, but ongoing training also comes with a cost. Additionally, you have to provide benefits. Aside from all of these, the company needs it needs to house the team. So there would be infrastructure costs. The company has to buy the right equipment for the car, for the office to keep up with the changing needs of the market. Business to business companies also have to invest in the right tools. Among those are different types of software. Outsourcing allows you to avoid all of these expenses. Hiring our already experienced team gives you access to reliable service at a more affordable fee. There will be no need for you to purchase the latest software or equipment. Sales outsourcing also means that you do not have contracted employees. Your agreement is with the service provider and not the individual salespeople. You will not have to worry about employee liability. With this, it will be easier to plan an accurate budget. Now, here's something to think about, and this is why we are talking about this this particular subject right now and why is this because software out there always has to be updated not only that but the knowledge that an individual needs is constant constantly being trained now years ago before the technology then companies and corporations would have to bring in train the trainers and they would have to, to purchase the training products in order to keep their employees up to scale and the skills they need. Well, today, all you have to do is find a platform that offers the courses that you need in order to keep yourself knowledgeable or at least with a base knowledge so that when you oversee that sales force, or you're talking to a company that you want to outsource, well, you know exactly what it is that you're talking about. And you can service them in a way that will help you to stay within your budget. Now, you do not know how to manage a sales team effectively. And what this means is that you are not knowledgeable in sales, so you don't know the skills that they need, but then you have to hire someone who does in order to manage your sales team. Having a competent sales team is important, but proper management of the team is also necessary. If it seems like you are already in, in the panic mode when dealing with a sales cycle, then managing the sales function of the company may not be right for you. As the head 
you should understand that making a sale is not the team's only goal. You have to build the company's credibility and gain the trust of potential and current clients. In short, you have to establish a long-lasting relationship, keeping up with the sales trends based on customer expectations and creating strategies is also a must. Managing an in-house team means you train your staff to become great at their jobs. If you think that you're not great at sales, then it is best to hire a team of experts. Another challenge to managing in-house sales teams is that there may be less flexibility to adapt to changes. Outsource teams understand that shifts are normal, so they are capable of adapting and changing their needs on your business. Okay, here's another thing to think about. What you need to do and what you need to think about is this. When you have an in-house team and you're using software, you need to have a customer relation management software. What that means is that whenever you have a customer's name and their email address, you also have other information for them. Why is that? Well, very, very simple. That is a way to keep notes on why you and that person have a relationship. What is it about that person that will put you in place to build a, a strong relationship with them? For one thing, you can keep track of birthdays. You can keep track of anniversaries. You can keep track of graduations or births or deaths because whenever anyone has a special day and you acknowledge it, then that's increasing your potential relationship with them. And by increasing that relationship with them, it really teaches you how to, to extend and get them to become repeat customers. What you get when you outsource your sales team. Before it was more common for business to business to have in-house sales teams, but many companies have now realized how advantageous it is to outsource the sales function. It is an easy and effective way to increase sales revenue. Here are some of the things that you get from outsourcing your sales needs. Engage experts, promote sales growth, access the right tools and technology, proper management of the sales team, highly effective strategies. When you're dealing with professionals who are in sales within an industry, they really know and are able to build and expand some of those services to help you when it comes to increasing sales. Well, it's, it's a very simple act of this. That one thing, they know what sales tools are out there, and they know how it functions and works within specific industries. That, And remember this, when you are hiring someone, to work within your company as and you have a special department, well, for one thing, you're, you're having to expand the office space. That's increasing the amount of money that you have in overhead. Whereas when you outsource, you can keep the same space and you don't have to worry about all that extra expense. So it helps you keep your expenses low. How to choose a sales outsourcing service. And this is where we really need to concentrate 
and know exactly what to do. Once you decide to outsource sales, you have to make sure you're getting help from the right service provider. So here are some tips to get started. Choose what part of the sales funnel to outsource. Find an outsource sales company that has experience in handling needs similar to yours. Figure out what technology they have experience using. Discuss how to monitor and evaluate progress. In the past, clients in need of product or service would reach out to potential service providers. They deal with a sales representative who would present a sales pitch. From the sales pitches, clients choose the one that they think is the best option. Nowadays, the sales process is not always straightforward. Business-to-business companies have to be more proactive in attaching and researching effective clients. The marketing team finds leads while the sales team gets the, the said leads into the sales pipeline. Now, I think the last few minutes, what I'm going to do is talk about some things that happen that influence me and my outlook. And I happen to live in a condo community and in an area where all of a sudden price and value prices are going up, that what happens is a lot of real estate people who are looking for property to sell, that, and they know that there's a lot of senior citizens that often when the, when the parent passes away, the child often will sell off the property for property nothing just to get the money. So what they do, and I've had many of these, is I've had people calling me about my property, asking me if it was up for sale. What they're trying to do is find that needle in the haystack when they come across someone that all of a sudden a parent is gone and now they're looking to sell. And the thing is, what they, how they do that is they go on websites. They look for specific communities in certain areas. And then what they do is they start, they look up the name of the owner. Then they look up the phone and then, then they turn it over to their telemarketing crew to kind of call. And the thing is today is no such thing as someone sitting at a phone making a phone call. What they do is they have these machines that they feed numbers into, and, though, and when they find someone then that is actually looking, then they turn it over to the person sitting at the phone. But it can be very annoying, especially to someone like me who has no intention of selling anything. Now, what I also want to tell you is that Outsourcing can be a great thing, especially when you have a small business and that is not your niche, but you need to find your niche because there's many ways to build relationships and find forums where you can educate other people in specific industries on the knowledge that you have. And remember, you can go to my website, and that website is the number one personalcareercoach.com. Now, if you're looking to get some information and learn about managing a team and managing and building leadership skills, you can go to my website, askdavidashensky.com, and there are some courses on there that can help you.